In this video, I'll be showing you how to do an isometric 2D movement controller script so that you click and then the player will go to that clicked position in your isometric map. And this will be using the new input system. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna want to do is download the new input system. So go to Window, Package Manager, and then we're gonna search for input at the top. And here we are, the input system. Then we're going to download it down here. It's gonna say install and you just click the install button and then it will ask you to restart the editor and you will click yes so that it can apply the new input system. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is make a character for our game. So you can have your own imported sprite character, but in my case, I'm just gonna right click and create a 3D object and I'm going to create a capsule. And then in this capsule, I'll decrease the scale to about 0.25 on both sides so we can make it small and then here, we're gonna wanna delete, remove this capsule collider from its inspector. And we're gonna want to add a 2D capsule collider because we are in a 2D space and we want to make sure the colliders are working properly. And now we can actually write a script for our object. So we can right click on the assets, create, and we can create a new folder. We're gonna call it scripts. And in there, we're gonna right click and we're gonna wanna create a new input action. So this is where we'll see our mouse movements. So I'm just gonna call this mouse and double click that. So we wanna be listening to two things. We wanna be listening for a mouse click. So we can add in a action map and the action map will just call it mouse. So action maps, you can actually have different action maps and you can switch between controls depending on your action map selected. So this might be useful if you want a different control if you're on the menu versus on the map itself. And then we have our actions. We can, we already have a new action here. We can press F2 to edit the name and we're gonna call it mouse click. So it's gonna be listening for a mouse click. And then under the mouse click, we can click this button here and we have a binding here. This is where we can actually add the control to listen to. So under the path, we can go to mouse and then we can do left button, which is our clicking button. You can also do right button if you want or any other button. When we click it, we're gonna get an event that we're gonna subscribe to. And then in that event, we also wanna take into account the mouse position. So we're gonna make another action called mouse position. And then for the mouse position, we actually want to return a vector two because the mouse is in an X and Y position. So it's two values, so vector two. So we're gonna switch to value. And then in the control type, we're gonna press vector two. And then in the binding itself, below it, we can go to our path, we can go to mouse, and then we can select position. So that will return the position of the mouse at the time we call it. So then we just click save asset and that'll save it for us. You can also click auto save up here if you don't want to keep saving it every time you make a change. And then we can click the input action itself in the scripts folder, and then we can generate a new C sharp class we can call the class name mouse input so we can differentiate it from the other one. And then we have to make sure the class name equals the file name. So we can press these three dots here next to the class file and we can just put in mouse input and click save. And that'll just save the file as mouse input.cs and click apply. All right, so now we have a, our script for our mouse input. We can right click and create a new C sharp script and call it our character movement and we can double click that. All right, so here's our script. The first thing we wanna do is get a reference to our mouse input. So let's say mouse input, mouse input. And now we have to have an awake function and in our awake function, we will initialize this mouse input. So mouse input equals new mouse input. And then we have to have an on enable function. So this is called when the script is enabled and we have to say mouse input dot enable. And then we also have to have a on disable function and there we will say mouse input dot disable. So when the script is disabled, we also disable the input action. And then in our start script, we have to subscribe to the event where we click and we can do that by saying mouse input dot our action map, which in this case is mouse dot mouse click dot perform. So this will be called whenever the mouse click is performed or finished plus equals underscore greater than equal sign mouse click which is a function that we will create right now so this is just saying once it's been performed then we're going to be calling this function and here you can actually put in 
a variable. We can just call it context and then you would actually be able to pass in the context by saying context.readValue and you can pass in the value itself that's read from the mouse click. But in this case, we don't need that since our mouse click is just calling the function when it's performed. We're not having to pass in anything like a vector to. And then let's make a private void mouse click and this is the function that will be called. And then in here we can get the position of our mouse. So that's a vector two, and we're gonna call it mouse position equals. And then we can say mouse input dot mouse dot mouse position. So this is the, the action that we created. And then we can say dot read value, and then we can pass in our vector two. So that's the value that we want to be reading. And to get the values from an input asset, this is the syntax that you need to follow. So currently we're getting the mouse position and this returns the mouse position in pixel coordinates. So Unity has a type of coordinate system called pixel coordinates and the bottom left of the screen is at zero, zero and the top right is at the screen width and the screen height. So this just returns a value between zero and the screen width or height, depending on the X or Y. But we don't want that. We want the actual point in our 3D space. Currently, it looks this looks 2D, right? But this is still a 3D representation. So we, if we unclick 2D, we can still see that we are still in a 3D space and we have to accurately convert those pixel coordinates into this world space, which is where our map and character live on. And we can do that via a simple function that Unity provides to us so that we can replace the mouse position equals, and we can call camera.main.screen to world point so that converts the pixel coordinates to a world point and we can pass in our mouse position. This takes in a vector three. So this casts the vector two into a vector three and it will just put the Z axis to zero, which is fine since it's a 2D game. We don't really need to worry about the Z axis. A little optimization that you can do is that every time you call camera main, Unity has to go and find the camera. So you can actually keep a reference to the camera in your scripts. So if you call it a lot, you don't have to keep saying camera.main. All right, so now that we have the world position, we actually have to get the cell that, it's, that we're clicking. So Unity has a function for that, that they include in their tile map class. So we can say at the top, we can say using Unity engine maps so we can get access to this. And then we also need a reference to the map itself. So at the top here, we can say public tile map map, or you can just make it private and make it a serialized field. So in the editor, we'll put our reference to our map and you have to make sure the map has a collider on it or else Unity won't be able to tell if that point is on the map. So now that we have a reference to our map, we can say vector three int, and that's just a vector three made up of ints, grid position. So this is the position in the grid and we can say map dot world to cell and we can pass in the mouse position, which is the world position. So we convert the world coordinates into the tile map coordinates. And the reason I'm doing this, so you can actually just move the character to this mouse position and it will go to the position of your mouse, right? But then you can be able to click outside of the grid and the character will still be moving outside of the grid. So if you actually wanna keep the movement inside of the grid, so you wanna make sure that they're clicking a tile, then you have to do this. You have to get the grid position and then we can check if the map has a tile at that position. So we can say if map dot has tile at that grid position, then we can move to that position. So how are we gonna to move to that position though? So we can actually do that in our update function and we can keep a reference to the position that we want to move to up here. So we can say private vector three, put destination, and that's the destination that we want to move to. And then let's actually initialize that value. So in our start, we can say destination equals and then we wanna set our destination to our current position so that we're not moving at the start of the game. So destination equals transform.position. And then down here in this if statement for the mouse click, we can say destination equals mouse position. So this is the world position. And this is just making sure we are clicking the cell. But if you put colliders around your map, then 
you can have this because the player will just like keep walking towards the wall, but it looks kind of weird if your character is just walking towards a wall. You can also make it so that the character stops once they reach a wall, but this just makes sure that we're in the grid itself. Awesome, then in our update function, we can actually move the character. So Unity has a function called move towards and you can put in your current vector, which is your current position. You can put in your destination and you can put in um, basically the speed of how fast you want to move to that position. So we're gonna be using that to move to our position. So we can say vector three dot move towards and we can put in our current position, which is transform dot position. We can put in our destination and then we can put in some kind of movement speed, which we will have to specify up here. So up here we can say serialize field private float movement speed. And then we can set that in the editor. And then back down here we have that movement speed, but we also have to times it by time dot delta time. And we do that because the time dot delta time is the time passed since the last frame. And since there's so many frames, if you don't put that, it'll move super fast towards the position almost instantaneously. But if you put the time passed since the last frame, then it kind of smooths it out over the time. And then here we actually have to equal this to the transform dot position. So it will make the player move. Awesome, but vector moves toward will be called on every frame. So we can actually perform a little check before that to make sure we're not at the position. So we don't actually have to call that function. So we can say if vector three dot distance, and we can say the distance between the current position and the destination is greater than 0.1f. So I don't want to make it exactly the value because sometimes it never actually reaches the exact position. There might be a little offset. So we're saying if the distance between these two vectors is greater than 0.1, which you'll barely notice, then we move towards that position. Awesome. So now we can minimize this and then our script will compile. We go to our capsule. We can add in a component and we can add in our character movement script. So let's put the movement speed to about two, and then we can click this little circle here next to the tile map, and then find the tile map that we want to be clicking. So we want to be clicking our ground. So if you haven't watched uh, my previous video on how to make an isometric map, or you don't know how to make an isometric map, I cover that in a previous video that I will link below. Um, but basically here we have our tile map, which is our ground, and you have to make sure that your tile map, that you have a tile map collider 2D, and you can also add a composite collider 2D to make all your colliders go into one to save some performance. And you also have to make sure your rigid body 2D is frozen on the position rotation and your gravity is zero. So this is to prevent the tile map from flying around and being affected by physics. So then Unity is not actually showing my player since it doesn't know in what order to render it on correctly. So we can click our capsule and then we can actually change the Z position. So I'm gonna change it to negative one so that it's in front of the map since it's a 3D object. If it was a 2D sprite, you just change the sorting layer and now we can press play. And then when we click, it'll move to our position. And if you see, if we click outside, it won't move to that position. And then the reason it's not detecting collisions with the tiles themselves, like the crates, is because we need to add in a rigid body 2D to our character. And let's make sure to freeze the rotation. We won't, don't want it rotating. And let's be sure to set our gravity to zero. So now if we click play, then it will start to detect collision based on its collider, which is awesome. Currently you see that we can't get close to the crate because the top of the collider is colliding with it. So then in our player, we can say, we can click it and press edit collider. And then we can just drag the top vertex all the way down. So we can make the collider smaller. And when we click play, it will actually appear to, you know, be standing in front of it. And it won't just stop at the top because that's where its collider is. And see, we won't be able to go on the leg. And then you can write a small script if you want to make sure that the player stops whenever it's near the collider so that it just doesn't try to like keep going inside. And you can do that by getting the vector between our current position and the destination and shooting a ray towards that. And if there's a collider in the way, then we can just stop. 
So that's just a inclination of how you might want to do that if you'd like. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed. I want to thank a new Patreon supporter on the dedicated tier, Armani. I really appreciate all of the support so far. And if you haven't checked it out already, I recently made a Patreon where I'll be offering source code and also early access to my videos as well as some other benefits. So thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you haven't joined my Discord already, the link will be in the description. Thanks.